The heart is located beneath the sternum inside the rib cage. The apex is the pointy inferior portion. It tips down and leftward and is located in the fifth intercostal space between the fifth and the sixth ribs. The base is on top of the heart where the vessels enter and exit, located below the second rib. The heart is a pump that propels blood through two different circulatory circuits at the same time. The first circuit is the pulmonary circulation, which is specific to the lungs. The heart pumps blood to the lungs to get the blood oxygenated. The second circuit is the systemic circulation, which is the rest of the body from the brain to the toes and all the organs in between. Vessels that extend from the heart are either arteries or veins. Arteries are considered to be high pressure because they receive the blood as, as it is being ejected from the heart. So arteries carry blood away from the heart and out to the body's capillary beds. Veins are considered to be low pressure because they are returning blood back to the heart. The pericardium is a membrane that surrounds the heart, containing the heart in its own space called the pericardial cavity. The membrane is a double membrane back on itself like a fist pushing into an inflated balloon. The part of the membrane that is touching the heart, so imagine if this fist is pushed inside this balloon, the part that's actually physically touching or covering the hand or the skin is the visceral layer. The, the part of the pericardium that's touching the heart is the visceral pericardium, while the outer layer that you would be able to see here is the parietal pericardium. In reality, it only looks like one layer, which is the parietal pericardium, as the visceral pericardium is fused with the surface of the heart and very difficult to distinguish from the surface of the heart. On the surface of the heart, you will first notice the pulmonary artery, as it is the most anterior of the great vessels running diagonally. The aorta is immediately behind the pulmonary artery. The superior vena cava is a thin-walled vein that brings blood from the head and arms back to the heart. The inferior vena cava is also a thin-walled vein that brings blood from the lower body and lower torso into the heart. On the upper surface of the heart, you should notice two flap-like structures. These are called auricles. These auricles are the upper regions of the right and left atria. Under the fat pads are the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries supply the heart muscle with oxygen and nutrients. The heart muscle is very thick. It is divided into three distinct layers. The outermost layer is called the epicardium and it is fused with the visceral pericardium. When you see a slice out of a heart, you can see this very thin outer layer. It is a little bit different than the meaty portion of the middle layer called the myocardium. Most of the heart wall is myocardium. The innermost layer that is in contact with the blood is called endocardium. Like the epicardium on the outside, the endocardium is just a very thin layer that is visually distinct from the myocardium. We can see the layers of the heart when we cut a slice out. In this slice, we can see the layers. Here is the epicardium, it's a sort of white layer. Then the bulk of it in here is myocardium. And the innermost layer, also a very thin white layer, is the endocardium. Coronary arteries are the vessels that are found on the surface of the heart. These vessels deliver blood to the heart muscle itself. It is blockage of these arteries that cause a heart attack. The coronary arteries are surrounded by a fat pad covering and they sit in these shallow grooves called a sulcus. The outer, outer fat layer covering the coronary arteries is not indicative of any of the buildup inside the coronary artery. The outer pad as well as the ditch or sulcus 
are features that prevent the coronary arteries from being compressed from the outside when the heart expands inside the pericardial sac while it is filling with blood. The word coronary refers to a crown. This is because the coronary arteries form a circle around the upper region of the heart with smaller arteries extending from it. The coronary arteries are the first branch off the aorta, so the heart feeds itself first. There are two main coronary arteries off the aorta, one on the right side and one on the left side. The right coronary artery circles around on the right side with a large branch coming off around on the side called the marginal branch, and then it moves on to the back side to the posterior descending branch, which serves the apex. The left coronary artery is only a few millimeters long, begins here at the aorta and ends here. It then splits into two separate branches. The left anterior descending travels anteriorly and down the front middle surface of the heart. It is the main one you notice when you look at a heart. The left anterior descending artery, or LAD, has been recently referred to in recent textbooks as the anterior interventricular artery. However, this name is not commonly used among cardiologists or the American Heart Association. The other branch that the left coronary artery divides into is called the left circumflex. This left circumflex artery travels toward the side of the heart and then around the back. Notice that the left circumflex, as it goes around the side of the heart and around to the back, will actually combine and meet up with the right coronary artery. This forms that circular pattern or ring around the superior portion of the heart. In this image, this is a side view of the heart, we can see the left anterior descending here in red, serving the anterior portion of the left ventricle, while in yellow, we can see the left circumflex coming around to the side and posterior region of the left ventricle. It is important to note that the coronary arteries supplying oxygen to the heart only contain blood when the heart is at rest, known as diastole. This is because at rest, the myocardium is not stiff and contracting and closing off vessels. Also during diastole, the flow of blood from the aorta to the coronary arteries is not blocked by the aortic valve. When the heart is contracting and ejecting blood, this valve here we see close is actually open and the flaps rise up. This valve flap will cover the opening on both sides to the left and right coronary arteries. In addition to the heart muscle contracting being very stiff, blocking off any of these small vessels that are diving down into the meaty part of the heart. So the heart only receives oxygen and blood flow to itself while the heart muscle is at rest. There are many cardiac veins that contain the used or deoxygenated blood. This blood must be returned to the heart so it can send it to the lugs, lungs for oxygenation again. All the cardiac veins drain their blood into a large wide vessel area called the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus then has direct dra a drainage hole into the right atrium where it can return the cardiac blood into the regular circulation and then be sent to the lungs.